guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're well. Today we are cooking at old school, sitting at the end of my bed, filming a favorites video. <laughs> it's been nearly a week since Alex left and you know, I'm doing okay, I'm doing fine. I've been throwing myself kind of into my work, into my PhD stuff and I've been applying for a job, which has taken up all my time getting this application together. So it's kind of distracted me and whenever I'm not distracted, like whenever something sort of triggers me, I do get a bit teary and have a cry. Usually it's at night time or if something exciting happens and I want someone to share it with and obviously he's not here. That's when I tend to get a little bit more mush. But for the most part I'm coping well. I think I was actually more sad prior to him leaving than actually once he'd gone. Like it was almost the thought of him going compared to the actual reality of him being gone that's been harder. However I do expect as we get like further along, even though I'm going to see him regularly, I think each time I leave him it's going to be harder and harder. Especially as we get into the winter and it's not sunny and beautiful. The sun does such wonders for my mental health. If you didn't watch my last vlog, I let you guys know that I have been approved to submit my PhD so I'm submitting on March the 1st which is so exciting. I have so much to do by then, I still actually have to write, write my conclusion. I have a bit of my last major chapter that I have to add to, I have to redo my introduction, I have to write an abstract, I've got like lots of little things to do but I've got heaps of examples to make as well, like I've got a lot to do but I'm really excited just to have it done, it's going to be very exciting. Enough of the life updates, let's get into some favourites for you guys. The first one I'll talk about is one that I have been using every single day because we are in the hottest January on record in Melbourne ever. I will stand firmly behind climate change as being a real thing because science. The Cancer Council Active Sunscreen. I'm not normally a fan of the kind of like council branded sunscreens. They're usually really, really thick and greasy and they don't absorb. However, they do really, really work. I've never been burnt using like proper approved Cancer Council sunscreens and me and Alex actually bought this brand way back on Hamilton Island and we tried it out there and it was amazing. It's the active one and it absorbs really fast. It holds up really well. If you're in Australia, I highly recommend this one. It's very, very good. Now I have a couple of makeup-y beauty goodies to talk about. The first one is a very, very hyped product. I think a lot of influencers were sponsored by this brand when the product was released but I bought this from Mecca with my own money. It was only $9 so that's why I was like I'll just throw it in because it's cheap and I want to try it out and I've seen a lot of hype and I wanted to form my own opinion of it. It's the Juno Velvet Sponge. I did not expect to like this because I had seen kind of like mixed reviews. Like a lot of the positive reviews were the sponsored ones and a lot of the negative reviews were the non-sponsored ones. So I was thinking it's probably all a gimmick. I really like it. <laughs> I think it's great. It creates such a beautiful flawless finish because of the kind of fuzzy texture to it. And what I quite like is that you moisten it and you wet it but then because it's kind of got this fuzzy layer it doesn't feel too wet on the skin. Like if you've got a foundation that doesn't like an overly wet sponge to apply it with. It works really well because it almost feels like a dry sponge. I really like it. I used it today to apply my foundation which I'm going to talk about which one I'm wearing in a second but yeah highly recommend. For $9 I'm stoked because it's a lot cheaper than the Beauty Blender and I can't buy the Flower Beauty sponge in Australia. Flower Beauty has arrived here. I will buy some products eventually but they have not brought out the sponge so I'm a little bit angry. <laughs> but speaking of what foundation I'm wearing, I was recommended this foundation a while back from you guys. I actually have tried it. I tried a sample a few months ago in, in a video as well and talked about it and it's the Smashbox Studio Skin 15 hour wear hydrating foundation. The color I tried was 0.1 which is the fairest shade they stock and at the time I was like yeah I can wear it but it almost feels a little bit too light especially in summer at the moment like it felt a little bit ghostly I think it would be a great color for winter. It was a very muted neutral undertone so I really loved the undertone I just felt like it might have been just a fraction too light. And one of you guys recommended I try 0.3. 0.3 is the second lightest neutral shade. I think there is a 0.2 that is a different undertone. So I ordered this online. I ordered it at the same time that I bought the Juno sponge. When I first got it, I was actually really disappointed because I saw it and I was like, oh, it looks so yellow. And I was like pumping it out and I was like, no. And I was like, oh gosh, this is gonna be too warm for me. And I started blending it out and I was like, ah. It's kind of working. I think if it was a little bit more muted like the shade 0.1, it would be perfect. Or if it had just a little bit more peach in it. However, shade aside, I'm loving the formula. When I tried it in the video a couple of months ago, I used it mixed with another product just to get a good shade. And so I couldn't really tell if I liked the formula itself. I hadn't tried it enough to be able to include it in my best foundations video. Hence why I haven't talked about it. I wanted to give it a really good go. I've used it probably like 
mm, 10 times or so since then it's got such good longevity as well which is really really hard to find that combination of like beautiful sort of satin dewy finish with longevity so highly highly recommend the formula definitely go and get a sample i think for the color because as i say it's a little bit tricky there are a lot of shades so the smashbox is kind of what i've been wearing when i want to do like a proper face of makeup if you saw my everyday sort of makeup video that i think i put out i think it was a week ago i used this the ysl le cushion and i adore this for everyday makeup like when i want to do minimal basically no makeup makeup this is what i reach for this is the most beautiful skin like finish out of any foundation i have the original product i got gifted however i did repurchase the refill for it so the initial purchase is like 90 bucks i think in australia to get like the actual container and everything with it so it's a huge investment but then i think the infills are only like 50 or something a lot less expensive because you're not paying for the outer packaging in that video i also talked about the uh, Aratium, I don't know how to pronounce that brand. I'm normally very prepared for videos and know exactly how to pronounce things, but I, I don't know how to pronounce this. I'm really sorry. I'll be more prepared next time. But it's the Sugar Ball Cushion Cheek Color, and this is in the shade number five. It's a Korean brand. They call it like a cushion, but it's got a puff, but it's actually just a creamy, balmy formula. So it's really just a cream blush, not so much an actual cushion blush. And it's what I'm wearing on my cheeks today, and I am absolutely in love with this formula and in love with the color. I'm very keen actually to try some more colors from the range so the next time I do an online Korean beauty order I'm gonna order a couple more colors and my last beauty favorite is by Mac and this is their shape and shade brow tint I've about this before and I featured it in one of my Anna Awards videos the brow video it's one of those sort of inky pen style brow products originally I was only using this side and I've used it up now so it's actually empty but when that ran out, I was in a bit of a pinch, so I was just like, oh, well, I'll just use the shadow side, and I've really been liking it. I didn't think that I was much of a shadow brow person. I think I said in my best brow products video, I was like, I don't do brow powder, so I'm not including it as a category. I've eaten in my own words, and I officially really like this brow powder. It's a weird application, though, because it's kind of like on the end of a little sponge tip applicator, and the product is actually in the end there, so every time you screw the lid on, it coats it in brow powder, and I love it. I'm actually trying to gear myself towards softer brows gradually. I've seen a real trend coming through in the beauty community of less intense, blocky brows. I think that looks so nice and natural. So I'm gonna try and experiment a bit more with brow powders, but I really do love how this one applies with the little sort of sponge thing. I've got a couple of like style favorites as well this month. The first one is the earrings that I'm wearing, Monstera Leaf earrings that I got from Pigeonhole here in Melbourne. So it's a store in the Emporium. I just think they look so nice. I and mean, the reason I really liked these ones is they're quite a muted gold, being a little bit more of a cooler undertone. Really, really brassy gold just doesn't suit me. So that's why like with my glasses, for example, I went with this kind of platinum-y silvery gold and these earrings definitely have that little bit more sort of cooler undertone to the gold color and I just think it's a lot more flattering on my complexion it suits my hair color the only downside is that I have to take this one out when I want to play violin because obviously it like jingles my next favorite is actually the jeans I'm wearing so I thought I would just come to my mirror and do the segment here I love vlog style I bought these jeans this month and I have worn them so much already I wanted to replace my ripped jeans that were just too ripped like they were no good anymore and I really wanted a pair of boyfriend jeans but boyfriend jeans don't typically normally suit me because I'm quite like big in the bum and thighs compared to my waist like my waist is pretty small normally boyfriend jeans are too tight in the legs but then loose at the top because they're made of a non stretch fabric and I was really really struggling to find something I really liked so I went to Just Jeans and just was like can you give me a stretchy pair of boyfriend jeans did ask for high waisted they didn't have any high waisted ones but I actually really like the sort of waist length on this I didn't think I would like a kind of mid-rise or lower low to mid-rise kind of fit I thought it would not be very flattering but I think they look good I think my booty look good so these are from Just Jeans. They're from the Amaze Denim range and they are called the Fitted Boyfriend Jean. So they are designed to look kind of casual. They've got the roll up at the bottom, but they're meant to be kind of fitted and look how stretchy they are. Like, they're like leggings. I also really love this top. This should be a favorite as well. This is from Forever New and I love it. It's kind of like a slight sort of bodice style. But yeah, really, really happy with these jeans. So stoked I got them. So if you struggle with boyfriend jeans as well, definitely recommend these. Let's go talk about my favorite plant. I know, I know, I shouldn't play favorites with my children, but there's one plant I wanna give a shout out to this month, and it is my beautiful devil's ivy. Look at how big this one has gotten. These are all like new leaves that are sprouting at the top. He just continues to grow. He used to live a little bit more centered in the middle of the balustrade, and I had like another plant hanging over the edge, but I actually got 
rid of that while I moved that one downstairs because this guy is just getting so big and full and I didn't feel like I needed all of that. Plus with the addition of my beautiful elephant leaf plant, which look, he sprouted a new leaf too. Isn't that amazing? There's such beautiful big leaves. But now that I have that in the corner, I kind of felt like there was enough greenery on that side so I could just shovel him along. Oh, he's doing amazing. The other reason this is plant of the month, this is his child, propagated this and look, a leaf. It's like it's first proper leaf since I took a cutting and grew a root and then planted it. Oh. And my last favorite I wanted to talk about was a TV show because I think everyone needs to watch this. So this show I actually finished in December with Alex but I didn't get a chance to talk about it and I wanted to share it because it's awesome. It's on Netflix and it's called The Last Kingdom and if you are like me and you love everything Vikings, I mean How to Train Dragon is one of my favorite films of all time. It's set in England in like the 800s I think, sort of dark ages. And it's all to do with kind of like the Viking invasions from the Danes, centered around the central character Uhtred of Bibimba. And he is just, <sighs> oh yeah, he's damn sexy. It's not the only reason I watch it, it is a good show, but man, he is attractive. <laughs> <gasps> Even Alex agrees, we watched it together. The only disclaimer I want to give is that it's pretty graphic. It's got very, very graphic violent scenes and it's pretty much a battle or some sort of fight in every single episode. So if that's not your jam, I definitely wouldn't watch it. But there are three seasons out and I've been told that Netflix has confirmed a fourth season to be released at some stage as well. If you've watched it, let me know what your thoughts are and what your favorite character is. But that's it from me today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below if you did and if there are any favorites of yours this month that I should check out. As I said, if you want to keep up to date a little bit more with my day-to-day -day life stuff, definitely check out my vlog. I'm doing weekly vlogs at the moment. They're not just literally me chatting at the camera. I do a lot of beautiful creative work in them, so I'd really love for you to check them out if you haven't. Definitely click that subscribe button if you haven't already, and until next time, I hope you guys have a wonderful couple of days, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!